saw what happened in 96 when only Shaq and Penny averaged double figures for the series. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Dagan. Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, I want to take a look at the 1995 Orlando Magic roster and rank the players of that team. And just to be clear, obviously the roster has 15 players, but I will narrow it down to the top 10. But before we start, let me ask you guys for a small favor. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content. And I would say enough said, let's get down into it. So, as I mentioned before, the roster had 15 players. I narrowed it down to the top 10 players. And just to be clear again, every team has very important role players. And the team doesn't consist of three star players, and that's it. No, every player has an important role. Doesn't matter if you play five minutes or 20 or 40 minutes, every minute counts. So, let's start with player number 10. All right, so coming in at number 10 is Tree Rollins. Tree Rollins had a very long and successful NBA career. In his heyday, he was a force to be reckoned with, super powerful, a real presence in the paint, and a big man who made it tough for his opponents. When he played for the Orlando Magic, he was far away from his prime, but he gave the team real leadership and was a coach on the floor. Next on the list, so coming in at number 9 is Jeff Turner. I'm sure that not many of you guys remember Jeff Turner, but he was one of the earlier tall guys who could really shoot the three ball. A very reliable role player who would benefit greatly from Shaq's presence under the basket. And when the Diesel would kick the ball out, Jeff Turner would be there to let the ball fly. And coming in at number 8 is Anthony Bowie. Anthony Bowie was a shooting guard that came off the bench and would provide a lot of energy. He was not the greatest shooter, but a pretty good defender that would harass some of the great wing players of his era. From the foul line, he would shoot over 80%, so in that regard, he was very reliable. And the next player, so position number seven, is Donald Royal. Donald Royal was one of those guys who would give you everything he had. Also a bench player who would not receive that many minutes, usually about 15, but he would still be a guy who could average 10 points if he needed to. From his potential, he could have been a starter on some other teams in the league. However, he did not make a single three-pointer throughout his entire career. Pretty interesting. Next on my list, so coming in at number six is Brian Shaw. Brian Shaw would be a future NBA champion with the Los Angeles Lakers, and rightfully so. One of the best backup point guards you could ask for. Super smart player, high basketball IQ, unselfish, and a true teammate. Him and Shaq had this thing going on called the Shaw Shaq Redemption. Basically, an LEU play between Shaq and Shaq. Here's Carr, the one time member of the Orlando Magic. For James Edwards. And Brian Shaw able to chase it down. So now we're moving up to the starting lineup. Number five is Dennis Scott, a.k.a. 3D. Now one thing is clear. The starting lineup of the Orlando Magic was incredible. That Dennis Scott is only at position number five shows you what a great team they had. 3D was not only one of the best sharpshooters of his era, but also one of the earliest guys who would finish a fast break with a three. On any other team, he would probably average around 20 points in a say day. At position number four, I got Nick Anderson. The reason why I got Nick Anderson ahead of Dennis Scott is because Nick was a better defender. Also a great shooter and a very powerful player. Just like Scott in his prime, he could average about 20 points per game. We all know what happened to him when he missed those four free throws against the Houston Rockets in the NBA Finals. But again, Anderson was also the guy who stole the ball from Michael Jordan when the Bulls played against the Orlando Magic in the 1995 playoffs. 91-90 the score. Chicago with the lead with 18 and one tenth seconds to play. And Jordan spinning his way against Anderson. Here comes Hadley. The Magic Bowl. Six and two tenth seconds to go. Another look as Nick Anderson did it from behind. Chasing Jordan, knocked it away, leading to this. And Penny Hardaway finds Horace Grant. 
Number three, next on my list to have Horace Grant, one of the most underrated players of the 1990s. When you play with Jordan, Pippen, O'Neal, and Penny Hardaway, oh, and Kobe Bryant, of course there's a high chance that you get overlooked. Horace was a sensational power forward, great mid-range game, rim protector, rebounder, defender, with long arms, that guy was a beast. Without Grant, the Bulls never would have won a three-peat in the early 90s, and without him, also the Orlando Magic would not have made the NBA Finals. Oh, you got to take that one. And it's blocked out of bounds by Horace Grant. Boy, the Magic really intensifying their defense in this one. Coming in at number two is one of my favorite players of all time, Anthony Penny Hardaway. I wonder what could have been. If it wasn't for those injuries, Penny probably would have been a top 20 player of all time. I'm 100% sure. Many people considered him to be Magic Johnson 2.0, but in my opinion, he was not only that, he was just a unique player. The third pick in the 1993 NBA draft, the Golden State Warriors select Anthony Hardaway from Memphis State University. A wonderful moment for Anthony Hardaway. You know, I'm not sure. I don't know if the league really knew what they were getting when they got Penny. 100 pounds from Memphis State. He was something new. New perspective. Right, it was just like the league was turning. And then Penny came, he was almost like, he was like a phenomenon. Smooth, flare, flash. Little Penny, the shoes. What do they call these shoes anyway? Yeah, Penny. Gotta have a whole swag. I guess you're going for the big numbers tonight, huh? Everything was just a fresh new approach. You know, it was different than Jordan. We've never really seen anyone else with his height handle the ball, play point guard. Be that quick. So well, if you're a basketball fan and you don't know who Penny Hardaway is, I won't waste my breath telling you because you're not a basketball fan. And at number one, what a surprise, Shaquille O'Neal, a.k.a. The Diesel. When Shaq came into the NBA, he was ready from the get-go and was putting up numbers that you hardly have ever seen from any rookie. In the mid-1990s, he was already one of the top three bigs. And that says something when you got guys like Patrick Ewing, Hakeem Olajuwon, and David Robinson, Dikembe Mutombo, and so on on that list. It's just crazy. But from a physical standpoint, that guy was just unguardable. There's a reason why still many people call him the most dominant force in NBA history. By Anthony Hardaway. Over Ewing! Penny wheeling and kneeling to Dennis Scott. Yes. Lock to O'Neal. Oh, baby! We get Horace. We get on the roll. And then we put Horace on our shoulders and carry him off in Chicago. Remember when uh, Mike had the 45? And he uh, turned it over, and then yep, Nick and came and steal. stole it, and, oh, yeah. Yeah. and then like I came in the locker room and told everybody, you don't say nothing about Mike, and Nick right. said something about Mike, and then he came back 23, 23. <laughs> he came back 23, and gave us like 45, yeah, 45 yeah, yeah, so I got really nervous. And it felt great because I felt like we, if you could beat, we were the, honestly the last team to beat the Bulls in a series, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So playing against those guys with Michael coming back that year, him trying to come back and claim the title or whatever, and for us to beat them in their place, you know, I feel like, you know, it's, it's time for us to get our ring. Speaking of the finals. Don't talk about the finals because your boy missing. <laughs> 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 ah! Can't believe it, right? Is it still bothers you? I don't blame Nick. I blame me. Because I was the leader of the team, and y'all followed me, and, and, and y'all went how far I went. I mean, that's why every time I went to the finals after that, I said, I'm going to make sure personally right. that we don't get swept, and I'm going to make sure personally that we don't lose. In case you haven't figured it out yet, I'm signing with the Los Angeles Lakers. You know, it's kind of interesting to imagine what could have happened if Shaquille O'Neal would have stayed with the Orlando Magic and Penny Hardaway never would have had those injuries. In my opinion, I believe that in the early 2000s, they probably would have had a dynasty because Dennis Scott was still pretty young and Nick Anderson was still pretty young. Horace Grant was not in his prime anymore, but still a valuable asset. So that team had all the ingredients to be an NBA dynasty. But 
We'll never know. Anyway, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.